In this video, Rick is going to explain the process of how to make a cargo camper. You sit down and maybe start out by making a list of the features that you want this thing to have. Some people are only going to use it for short-term camping, meaning a couple days here, a couple days there. So they may opt to, to do bunk beds in it, for example. Me, I wanted a, a larger stationary bed. That to me was important. I wanted at least a partial indoor kitchen. I didn't need a built-in stove and oven, but I did want a sink. I wanted a refrigerator inside the trailer, and I wanted counter space to have a microwave and to be able to set up a hot plate or a stove on the countertop if I had to cook inside. Or So the kitchen wasn't terribly important because I was gonna have an outdoor kitchen anyway. I did want hot water, so I put a hot water heater, instantaneous water heater in, where some people just use five gallon jugs and have a sink with either a foot pump or a hand pump or a small electric pump, that sort of thing. So you gotta kind of decide on what features you want. I think that's the first step. What are you gonna use it for? How long do you think you're gonna be out on the road at a time? And then look at what you think, just try to visualize what life would be inside of a, a box and what what all amenities your box should include. So once you have that down, then you can look at maybe drawing just a rudimentary floor plan just to show how things would fit inside this thing. And then you start to go from there. And that's when the real fine tuning design takes place. With me, I drafted uh, two scale sketches of both the floor and each of the walls. I actually did an elevation drawing of the walls, what, what it's gonna look like with my cabinets and countertop in the nose, where the windows are gonna be, and the light switches and all that on the side wall, the air conditioner on the back wall, and the, the couch bed. I did elevations so that I could see that everything was workable, and when I started putting it together, I wasn't going to have problems creeping up on one another. I've seen where, like, people will put a kitchen in and they'll have a cabinet sitting right against the sidewall. And then they realize that they can't pull the drawer out or open it, uh, mm. the cabinet door fully because of it. Those are the kind of things you have to be careful of. So you start with the design, you fine tune it. If you have trouble visualizing, then maybe go ahead and tape out on the floor where things are gonna be. Be sure that that's workable for you, that the amount of leftover floor space is acceptable, that sort of thing. Then you start to go to utilities in terms of concepts. The electrical, what kind of light fixtures you're gonna have, where they're gonna be, where the outlets are gonna be, how you're gonna set the switches, and then look at how much daylight you want into it, whether you're gonna put a rooftop fan in, or, or a vent, or windows, and window in the door, windows on the side, where they're gonna be. And you just take it kind of one step at a time and add this stuff, how I'm gonna route my plumbing from the back of the trailer up to the front. And then I look at the other aspects of construction, insulating the walls and the ceiling, what I'm gonna use for wall finishes, what type and color and finish of cabinets I want, what type of flooring I want. Before I actually start construction, I usually try to get little samples in decorating, like in commercial spaces like hotel rooms and whatnot. They make these mock-up boards and they take a photograph of the lamps that they're gonna have, the furniture they're gonna have, the fabrics for the bedspread, the drapes, and the wallpapers. They put them up on this board and say, all right, does anything clash here? That's the time to do it, not when you're already starting to put it up in the room and go, oh, shit, the wallpaper and the drapes don't look good together. <laughs> That's kind of the mentality and the, the process that is necessary when you're putting one of these campers right. together. I don't think I would be good at this because I just jump into things. And it, it sounds like there's a lot of planning. And you, you're planning, you kind of are envisioning the final product before you even start the work. Yeah, when a builder builds a house, he's got a pretty extensive set of drawings to work from and has to actually include elevation drawings of the sides of the house and the view from up above and the floor plan. Those are all actually required in most places in order to even be able to get a permit to build it. And that builder can really visualize, just looking at the lot, what this house is going to look like sitting there. Now, I'm not saying you have to be able to envision this to every detail, but you should have a concept in your mind that you're comfortable enough with that you get yourself to the point where you're ready to actually take out some tools and start. So let me ask you this. Is the bed the most important 
concept to be designed? It was to me. Okay. But not necessarily to everybody. If you want to have a, a full kitchen because you are you love to cook, then you're going to allocate probably more space to a kitchen than what I did. The idea of doing maybe fold-up beds on the sides, okay for you. Uh, you may want to have a table in there, a dining table that drops down. Obviously, with a smaller trailer, you can't incorporate everything that to be yeah. totally fixed. You gotta have some dual purpose, dual function space. I figured out where I was gonna do the bed and the cabinets and whatnot first. And that to me determined how big a window I could go with and where I was gonna put it. I didn't wanna just be cutting more uh, studs in the sidewalls than necessary. So I located these windows so they'd be in between two studs and they were wide enough, I had to cut one stud out, but I was only cutting one stud, not two or three. There are a lot of people that have made comments after some of the videos that we've put up about this trailer that you know, were like, well, I would have done this, or I would have done that, or I have to have this. Well, that's wonderful, but that's you. I built this thing according to what our needs were and our budget, and I tried to make this thing as versatile as possible because we weren't sure just whether or not we were going to be camping for more often and longer periods as we got older and weren't working as much. So I wanted this thing to be as versatile as possible. That was a big thing for me. Did you go on YouTube a lot and look at some designs? As I looked at the way people had furnished their trailers and laid them out. The lion's share of these trailers they're putting in plank ceilings and sometimes plank walls. I didn't want that because I've had enough experience as a carpenter knowing that all this nice dry cedar tongue and groove will eventually, if you bang into it or something falls against it, it can crack and splinter. And depending on how you finish it, unless you put a really heavy seal coat on it, it's gonna hold dust and lint. And I didn't want that. I wanted something that I could clean and I knew it was gonna be almost hospital clean. So I opted to put fiberglass reinforced panels on the walls. I happened to be in uh, Home Depot and I saw this underlayment and I've used a, a lot of underlayment over the years for various things in my construction projects. I happened to see this underlayment. It had a very nice looking, what looked like birch veneer on it. And I thought, well, gee, I'll put that up on the ceiling and I'll paint it. Well, I looked at the stuff after I put it up and it was so nice. I said, it's a sin to paint this. So I did just varnish that natural and I varnished my cabinets natural in the, the trailer because I like, I like wood tones. I just don't like an overabundance of it. And I particularly don't like rough woodwork. You know, I see guys that build their cabinets out of furring strips and stuff like that and put a plywood top on it and, and then you got a raw plywood edge there. I wanted a little bit more than that. So I had some leftover for Micah from a job that I did and it was a big enough piece that I could make my countertop. What is the most challenging part for someone or what should they really think ahead? The and, design well, part? That, that depends on their skills. All right, let me give you an example. As far as design goes, we ran into a guy down in uh, the Keys. He had done a cargo conversion. And he spent, I think he said it was at least three weeks, if not more, just in the design stage before he ever took out a tool. Yeah, moving the tape around. Yeah. And stuff. Now me, I probably spent less than a week total, you know, be a couple hours here, a couple hours there over the course of a week. So I got maybe 10 hours in the initial design stage. So I pretty much knew my layout. It wasn't a, a final design to the inch. So I had to like work it as I went along. That was, that's my way of doing things on, on this particular project. For me, none of it was difficult. For some people, you know, you may be afraid to tackle the electrical or the plumbing. That's what I hear the most of. I, I don't know anything about electric, I don't know anything about plumbing. I would do this in a heartbeat, I mean, with my trailer, but I'd have to have somebody do that for me. So if that's the case, you got two choices. You can either pay and have somebody do it for you or find somebody, a friend that knows something about it, let them help you, or you can learn. You know, you're never too old to learn. If you get into a bind, then you get a little bit of help, but basically you can try and do, do it yourself, you know, entirely. If you're relatively handy with your hands, there's no reason that you can't do all of the trades. It's the knowledge that you're lacking 
and knowledge is, is relatively easily obtained with the internet and YouTube, yeah. yeah. But there, there's still a skill with using the tools and, and doing something you've never done before. I, from working construction for years and years and years, and I probably had 500 different employees in my crews over that time, because I used to do a townhouse and apartment complex projects where I'd have 30 guys in a crew at a time. The biggest skill that any of those guys, and they were just carpenters, but this goes on to plumbers as well, and electricians. The biggest skill that you need is to be able to actually accurately read a tape measure. I had one <laughs> that guy. Me out. <laughs> I had one guy in all that time that would take a tape measure out and he'd go, it's 59 inches and five of them little lines. If you know fractions that you, you can measure accurately, you'd be amazed at how successful you can be on this. That's probably the biggest challenge is being able to accurately read. And then of course, maybe doing a little bit of basic mathematics, yeah. trying to figure out how many cuts you can get out of a sheet of plywood and that sort of thing. Well, here's so. the thing, if you're making a camper for yourself, I mean, unless you're an, a perfectionist, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's what you're willing to accept. Well, all right, and different people have different degrees of perfectionism. Yes, right. and different standards. And I understand that you're at a professional level well, in your work where uh, other people's wouldn't be. If a guy's doing a trailer just to take it out hunting, and he's not a, a, a skilled carpenter, and he's not that neat to begin with. He's gonna come in there with muddy boots and put them up on top of his counter. He doesn't need the writs. And I understand that. Well, I don't think we have writs. We have professional craftsmanship, but I don't think we have bells no. and whistles. No, we don't. And bells and whistles have a dollar amount attached yes. to them. And, and here's the thing. You know, you take that camper and go out, whether it's a rustic camper with a, a, a fold-up cot in there or ours or someone's top of the line with all these fancy bells and whistles. It's costing you the same to stay there. You're in the same environment in, in right. the woods. So it's, it's what you really want, I guess. Well, what's the number one goal of a trailer when you take it down to its basic concept? That's to be able to sleep in it and wake up in the morning. <laughs> have enough ventilation that if you fart during the night, it's not gonna drive everybody out. Yeah. What do you guys really lit the trailer up with that little bucket thing the other night? I'm just saying, I do all my business outside. So what do you guys really stunk the camper up? Did you wanna talk about the order? Is, cause I don't know, I don't I don't know construction. So I think it's in insulation and then walls. Well, yeah, you, you've got to work your walls from the inside out, so. Uh, actually, the first thing is to, with mine was to run the electrical. What about the windows? When did they go in? Well, they go in early, but with mine, the first thing was to run the electrical. I knew where I was going to run the plumbing, and it wasn't inside the wall. It was outside the wall on the ceiling, so that wasn't an issue. The electric had to go in. The insulation went in. Once I had the insulation up, I put the ceiling up. And then the plywood that was inside the trailer, which I had taken off the walls in order to put the insulation in, that had to go back in. Once the plywood was in, I had two choices. I could go to the floor next or I could actually do the finished surface on the walls, which is the FRP. And I think I put the FRP in next to put my floor in last so that I didn't have any problem with damaging it. Then the cabinets go in and you put your wall cabinets up first because they're easier to hang when nothing's in the way. Set your base cabinets, countertop. Then you install your devices. You put the receptacles and the switches into your boxes. Well, what is the skill level that, to do this? I mean, is there a special tools? Is there a lot of skill level? There are there are a lot of specialty tools, but generally only a person that works in a trade is gonna own those. I mean, I had a miter saw, power slide, compound miter saw 12 inch that I used during the construction of my trailer. It was a six hundred dollar saw. Now the average person doesn't have that, but you can go and buy a Ryobi battery operated miter saw and make miter cuts. You can use a wooden three dollar miter box and a hand saw. The difference between the rudimentary tools and the more expensive tools, the more expensive tools are less effort and they're faster. You can get the same results with rudimentary tools if you're conscientious and careful. 
I mean, if you look at some of the stuff that the Japanese create in terms of architectural products and artwork using just these little draw-type hand saws, it's amazing. Well, back in the day, they didn't have all these fancy tools. Well, the Amish, you know, there's yeah. an example. They're building these barns and... And they even do fancy trusses with these uh, mortise and tenon joints and whatnot. And that's all done with hand tools. And I guess a lot of it, you know, if you're not happy with it, you could maybe tear it some of it apart and redo it. It's really minor. I mean, they make caulking and putty just for that reason. <laughs> Let me pick your brain a little bit. And this is off the cuff. So <laughs> what would you tell somebody that wants to do this? I would tell them. First off, if you have trepidation about it, stop looking at it as a shotgun thing, a big approach to it, and realize that any job at all, any journey, you break it down into individual steps. And those individual steps are doable. And the amount of money that it will save them, like doing it themselves rather than buying a camper or paying someone to do it, would yeah. be huge. Right, and I got a guy down the street from us that bought a camper uh, two years ago. Yeah. And it's a pretty decent sized camper. It's probably about a 24, 26 foot at least. I saw him outside yesterday. He's still in the process of tearing this thing apart and redoing the interior of it. So a lot of guys that have these ideas about buying these old campers that have you know sustained a lot of water damage and that kind of thing. I would rather any day of the week take my cargo trailer from scratch and turn, turn it into a camper than I would want to tackle one of these things where I got to tear rotten floors out and rotten walls and then you find out that they got siding damage on the outside and you can't find panels to match it. And, or a door to match. Uh, Would you do another one? In a heartbeat. I think people have asked you this. Could someone hire you to do theirs? I don't know that I really would want to hire out and do a complete build for somebody else. Now, I'd do another complete build for myself, but I would be willing to help someone else with like, yeah. doing the plumbing or the electrical or make up the countertops for them or that sort of thing. Yeah. But like even with the cabinets, I could have built my own cabinets in this trailer. Well, I haven't built a a cabinet, a kitchen cabinet since the early 1970s because labor was cheap enough then that it was feasible to do it. Now the, the labor is at such a premium yeah. and I'm retired, I want free time, so I don't want to spend a week building a bunch of cabinets when I put this whole trailer together in like two weeks time. Yeah, well, I think we had had a trip scheduled and I was really tired of lugging all of the camping gear and it just made sense to make a camper out of the trailer that you really weren't using that much. So you did it very quickly. You know, I hate to say this, but for once, she was right. <laughs> I'm right more than once, you know that. We camped in the camper one time before it was converted. I think there were tools over my head. Right. Well, if you take it out and test it, a lot of people say to do that because you kind of get a feel for it. Yeah. Like what you want and where you want it. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. If you buy a trailer, go sleep in it one time for overnight at least and see how it feels. You know, if you're claustrophobic before it's finished, you're going to be claustrophobic once you get all your other crap in there. Well, we're really not in the camper very often. And what we do have is that that canopy with the big screen house. Right, I'll put a link right. to that. And we love that. That's a, a 10 by 10 room. Put it up over your picnic table or you can leave the picnic table outside and just put, you know, chairs and your ice chest and maybe a small table in there. You know, it's very versatile in that respect. Well, thank you very much for letting me interview you. I know that you have showed a lot of people camper and we've done some videos about it, but I thought maybe some people might have had questions and this way you could go more into depth and it could help them out. So thank mm. you so much. Okay. You can just put them in the comments below if you have any questions. Be sure to watch this next video if you want to see more of the camper. Take care, guys. Happy thanks. building. Thanks for watching. All right. Take care. Bye. And get started. You all come back now, you hear?